might have seen the last video where I demonstrated a GitOps CI/CD pipeline with GitHub Actions and Rancher Fleet. Perhaps it left you a little underwhelmed. Just a little, I hope. Now, the reason is there are a couple of important things that I left out, but we're not going to get to all of them. Not yet. One important piece is the deployment strategy. And you might be part of an organization that follows a very particular approach to new version releases. And there are a couple of different strategies, but in this video, I'll show you how to carry out Canary deployments as part of your GitOps pipeline. For those of you completely new to this, Canary deployments entail you releasing the old application version in parallel with the new one. Now, the old version is what is referred to as the primary release, and the new version that you intend to test and promote is your Canary release. Part of this process includes configuring settings to split the incoming traffic between the primary and the Canary release, and you do so by a certain percentage and incrementally increase the traffic to the Canary release provided that it meets certain conditions. And these conditions are based on metrics of request success rates or other custom metrics that you come up with. In addition to that, you can also have acceptance and load tests that you can run. Now, if the criteria aren't met, then you would roll back the application version. And there are various ways of accomplishing this, but I'll be using Flagger, which is a tool that will help me automate the entire Canary release process. I'll have an Nginx ingress that will create a load balancer as my entry point, and Flagger will create services that will proxy the traffic to the primary and Canary releases. When a new version is detected in the deployment, Canary pods will be spun up alongside the primary release, and Flagger will get to work on the automated tests and progressive promotion of the new release. Let's take a look at this in action. So for starters, what you're looking at is the Canary resource, which is a custom resource that Flagger makes use of in order to determine um, or configure exactly how we want this release process to play out. And so you've got the four common top level fields, as you can see over here. And what I want to bring your attention to under the spec is you'll notice the provider over there is Nginx. The reason being is Flagger allows you to integrate your canaries either with service meshes, with various service meshes that is, such as Istio or Linkerd, um, or you can also go with different ingress controllers. So as I mentioned, I'm using Nginx, hence me specifying that over there. And then we do need to um, add some additional references um, for properties that we're working with. So um, this particular canary release is going to be targeting um, my orders deployment. So I'm just working with the orders microservice and you'll notice that I'm referencing the deployment over there. In addition to that, I'm also targeting the particular ingress for my orders microservice API. And so I just specify the particular name of it over there. And then lastly, under the um, auto scaling reference, I've got a horizontal pod auto scaler that will be scaling my orders um, whenever the traffic increases. And so that will modify the deployment property. And then that um, Kubernetes will essentially act on that to make sure that the um, live state gets updated based on the desired state, which will all be calculated based on the um, CPU utilization for my orders. Now, further down here, this is where we get into the details of exactly how you want um, this canary release process to take. So you can set a particular deadline, and this will vary, obviously, from team to team or project to project. And um, you might have heard me mention as well that um, the services will actually be generated for you by Flagger. Um, these are the essentially the upstream servers behind the ingress. You'll have both primary and canary. Um, services that will be created. And so you would define the relevant properties for those over here. And so this will set up a cluster IP service for both um, both services. And in addition to that, the target port, which should obviously match the container for your app, the container port for your application. Now, further down under analysis, um, this is where you would determine how you want the progressive steps to essentially uh, play out as it pertains to the percentage of the traffic that gets rooted. And so you'll notice over here that I've set the max weight for mine to be 50%. And um, the steps that we'll be taking, uh, the incremental steps that is, are 5%. And then I've got a threshold over here in terms of the failed metric checks before there's actually going to be a rollback and that is set to 10. And as for the scheduled intervals, um, so that is for each step that will be taking place, I've set that to 10 seconds. 
And you might have met, heard me mention earlier as well that a very important part over here is the continuous uh, checking of the metrics. And so this is where you would define some of that. And so Prometheus is the tool that I'll be using for scraping of those metrics. And um, what I'm defining over here is you'll notice that there is the request success rate, which will be checked. And I've set the threshold range as well. And now in addition to that, I've also set some alerts and I'll be using Slack for that. And this is just so that whenever a Canary release gets started, um, I'll get a notification to a particular Slack channel and also when that gets completed. And as I mentioned, you can add some additional testing um, for your releases that determine whether or not the promotion should continue. And so what I've done over here is I've added an acceptance test, which will essentially um, run a query to um, the particular endpoint, which will just be a GET request in this case, and then it will check for the property delivery date, which is a new property that I've added to my orders back end. And then very important as well would be the load testing. And so you can uh, just make use of the flagger load tester over there. And so all of this is happening inside of the e-commerce namespace, as you can see. And so this will continuously query that. And that's another important reason why I've got the horizontal pod auto scaler, because as the traffic increases, um, the horizontal pod auto scaler will modify the deployments um, as, it see, as it sees fit in order for the pods to be able to scale up. Over here, I just have my slack.yaml file, and this is just essentially the alert provider. As I mentioned, I'm using Slack, and so this will send any notifications or alerts um, to the K8 uh, deployments channel in my workspace that I've created. And the reason why this is important is because if you've got teams that will essentially be working um, with these kinds of deployment strategies, and if they need to be aware of what's happening, this is a nice way of notifying them. So this might look familiar to those of you that saw the previous uh, video where I demonstrated the GitOps CI CD pipeline. And what we have over here is the orders, uh, specifically the get request. And um, this will fetch a list of different orders. And what I've added is the delivery date, which is what is also being tested in my Canary release. And I've just made a slight update to the format of the date. And um, in addition to that, I've updated the version. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to proceed to commit and push these changes and that will kick everything off. And we're going to go through the whole flow once again of um, the CI stage in GitHub Actions, where the application will be built, it will be tested, it will be pushed to Docker Hub. And um, once it has successfully been pushed to Docker Hub, um, I'm going to clone the repository for the relevant Helm charts, update the values file with the new tag version, and Rancher Fleet will detect that change and then roll, proceed to roll it out. And that's where Flagger will take over and we'll see what that looks like as well. Great, so that has successfully passed, uh, which means that the image tag has been updated. And if you come and see over here, you'll notice that we now have new pods being spun up. Um, and you'll notice that we've got orders primary over here. And you'll notice that some of them are actually running the old version and we've got um, the Canary releases as well with 0.1.6 running at the same time in parallel. And you also notice that I got that Slack notification just telling me that there's been a new release. And so the Canary process is actually running. So if we take a look at this over here in K9S, you'll notice that it is slowly progressing and following just those interval steps and following the step weight of five. So let's take a look at that in the browser. So this is the old version with the date format. So if I was just to refresh this a couple of times, I'd probably see different results on different occasions as things progress. As you can see over there, this is the new date format, but things are still progressing. So that means if for, based on the traffic that is coming in, any end users or clients would sometimes see the old version until everything is completely done.
And as you can see, we've hit the maximum weight, and so it's proceeding to promote this version. So if I was to come back to Rancher, you'll notice that the old versions are now being terminated, and we are going to just be running the new version, which is 0.1.6. So if I come and request here again, all we'll be seeing is the new date format because we've got the new release version. And I'm sure Slack will also say the same thing. As you can see right there, Canary Analysis completed successfully and the promotion is finished. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you found that helpful. Be sure to join the SUSE and Rancher community network, join other cloud native practitioners, and make the most of our resources to help you on your cloud native journey.